from a prostate cancer perspective, there's been a lot of very reassuring practice affirming data. Um, uh, no big immediate game changers, but I think there are some interesting um, aspects of uh, development. Uh, I would maybe highlight three there. Firstly, um, immunotherapy in prostate cancer. We've seen little bits of data over the last few years, some rather disappointing data last year uh, about pembrolizumab showing really rather low response rates. Um, uh, we saw some data here with the combination of ipilimumab and nivolumab, which of course is a combination that's quite widely used in the treatment of melanoma and will be soon in renal cancer. Um, and here we're pushing up response rates in patients who are chemo-naive patients is pushing that response rate up to around about 24%, which is probably the best sort of figure we've seen so far with immunotherapy and prostate cancer. Um, slightly confusing data because there was also a post-chemotherapy segment where the response rate was quite a bit lower. These are all small numbers and of course we've not yet seen any randomised data. But, you know, I think immunotherapy is still something we need to find out much more about in prostate cancer. Uh, and again, the cost there was, was quite a toxic regimen, as, as we already know from melanoma. Uh, secondly, we saw the first phase three data with a new antiandrogen, which is darolutamide. Um, and this was a study in M0 CRPC. Uh, not particularly convinced that that's an important unmet therapeutic need in the UK uh, and of course we've seen two other big trials, the Spartan and Prosper trials in that arena. Um, prior, but prior to this I wasn't quite sure why we needed a new antiandrogen um, but this is different from enzalutamide and apalutamide, it's molecularly different and it doesn't seem to cross the blood-brain barrier and so the claims were that this drug might not have the same central neurological toxicities that we see with enzalutamide and apalutamide. All I would take home really from the Aramis trial is that those claims may turn out to be true with darolutamide so it might be a drug which is maybe more broadly applicable in terms of its toxicity profile. And there are other studies ongoing which might produce more information to this might, might one day be a useful drug. Um, the third study of interest was a trial of enzalutamide in patients with metastatic hormone sensitive prostate cancer. This is the ARCHES trial. Uh, I mean the detail uh, are not that exciting. It shows very much the same as what we see, what you'd expect to see. It looks very similar to Abiraterone as seen in the latitude and stampede trials. The difference here is that this trial included a subgroup of patients who had had prior chemotherapy for hormone sensitive prostate cancer and on the subgroup analysis it looks like the benefit is still there. In other words, giving chemotherapy followed by enzalutamide is m more effective than just giving chemotherapy alone. So, uh, and, and that's the first time we've seen that sort of sequential approach in hormone sensitive prostate cancer. Of course, there'll be lots more trials coming through, including trials of abiraterone in that context uh, to confirm that, but I thought that was of interest.